YouTube, YouTube, YouTube. But once again, guys, thank you for support. I really appreciate it. If you're new to my channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button, also that notification icon. Also, another thing, guys, uh, if you do like these type of tips, make sure you smash that like button. Uh, it really will help me uh, grow my channel. Um, I, I, I've been really stagnant over the, the last year. I don't know a particular reason why. They, they started changing up some of the... Um, features and, and some of the advertising requirements and since they since YouTube did that I've been very stagnant so uh, I really if you guys can comment that'd be great um, uh, if you can go ahead and hit the like button that'd be great if this actually helps you which is some kind of approach so I want to talk about a play that uh, a lot of people use online it's called slants and it's a it's a it's a fairly difficult play to actually stop online uh, it's just a it's a mesh concept but it's a deep mesh concept so I want to provide you with a strategy on how to go ahead and stop uh, slants and what it comes down to is basically making sure that you have your uh, zone drop set up correctly. So first and foremost, we're not really going to touch the, the zone drop flats. Uh, those are the, the, the pink zones or the, uh, the, the light blue zones. We're going to take a look at curl flats and, hooks, uh, and hook flats. Now, first and foremost, I want to go ahead and take my hook flats, which are the yellow zones. I want to put those at 10. And then our curl flats, we're going to go ahead and take these and put them up to 15. Now, uh, a lot of times with if someone's playing mesh against you, you might want to drop these down against five. But if, he's, if they're using strictly slants against you, uh, slants, uh, if you get a little bit more depth, it's better for you because slants are, when they're getting over the middle of the field, they're going to get a little bit more depth. Uh, the, the, the curl flats option of 15 yards is going to basically take, take away those deep slants on the backside of, of the route. So when they, get, uh, when they get past the middle of the field and get to the other side of the route, that's where the 15 zone drops. In. Now, uh, the coverages that you can use, I find that one of the best coverages to use is just out of the 34 odd uh, coverage, which would be the cover uh, 34 coverage. But you could use other types of coverages too. And the key to this uh, this defense uh, and setting up this defense correctly is just making sure that you have basically, um, you know, zones. Uh, you have purple zones that are dropping out. Uh, and then basically you're going to have, uh, you know, yellow zones in the middle of the field. So uh, that's the key to this. But let's just go and use this out of 34 odd. Um, and we're going to use this with the uh, cover for drop show too. We're going to take a look at the double slants uh, just because this is a very common play that you'll see online. All right, so uh, basically with this defense, uh, the key to this defense essentially is letting the zones play their position and then hoping someone actually makes a bad read. Now, um, one of the adjustments I like to do uh, on the outside is I like to go ahead and take uh, my outside defenders, my two corners on the outside, and put them in deep halves. Uh, and the reason why is I want them to fall back a little bit more in a zone. Another thing I'm going to do, too, is I'm going to go ahead and use this guy right here. And this guy right here is going to essentially be my user where I'm going to try to pick it off. Now, a tip that I've, I've seen online just recently, uh, and which actually works a lot, is that if you want to have better control with your user, you put him in a blitzing situation. He'll be, he'll be in a lot better control. And we're just going to go ahead and play down here in the box and just wait for our opponent to go and make a read over the middle. So we're just going to go ahead and make a read over the middle. And he drops it down to the flat. That's, that's, that's a good situation to be in. So this is going to be our setup right here. Um, you know, you want a baseline, make sure your opponent reads. And basically what we want to do is we want him to make a decision where he wants to go with the ball. Now, um, he's the CPU is actually settling for, for the flat, uh, and that's actually a good situation because most players online do not want to settle for the flat. Most players online are looking for the slant routes. They're looking for this route right here, and they're looking for the crossing route right here. But I want to show you that look at these defenders. They're all in the area right now uh, where all the mesh concepts at. And when they when they actually get uh, when they actually throw the ball afterwards, they're actually going to be throwing into another coverage right here. So this is going to force your opponent to go ahead and and try to throw um, into one of these these slant routes or settle underneath or take off this quarterback. So here's another good example of a of a, a slants play. And we want to go ahead and user this guy. We're going to put him in a blitz. And basically what we want, want our opponent to do is we want him to settle down for the flat. They don't want pe most people when they play slants, what they're doing is they're trying to look for the crossing routes over the top because most players online are greedy. They want to get yards. So if they're using slants and they're settling for flat routes, where basically they're not picking up any yards, 
that's that's going to be a win for you. So you can see right here, he throws, he only gets five yards. He's looking for 15 or 20 yards. But take a look at what's going on right now. We got the slant on this backside right here. He can't throw to this route early. He's got these guys crossing right now. I've got basically three defenders in the area, and right now he's passing off and passing into this this passing lane right here. So that's all just taken away. It's just not going to be an area you can go with. Uh, conversely, on this backside right here, uh, where the double slant's going, uh, this guy's passing off to this guy. If he throws in this passing lane, it's going to get picked off, and I have to go ahead and double team this guy so he doesn't get past the depth right there. So uh, very easy to set this up. Uh, defense and forcing him to check it down underneath. Most players are going to basically not want to check things down, and if they're checking things down, you're winning. So now I'm going to go ahead and just do very aggressive hard flats to take away his hard reads and then have all these crossing routes underneath. And now you can see he's essentially completely locked up, and he's just going to have to try to get rid of the ball. So in that type of situation, you can see how he got completely locked up because it took away those hard flats. Most players are not going to go ahead and run a play like this. What they're going to do is they're going to take one of their wide receivers and streak them up. So uh, I wouldn't go with a very uber aggressive defense like this um, uh, when I'm playing. I, would, I wouldn't put my guys in hard flats like this to go and take away those hard flat things. Uh, they're most one of these guys, one of these defenders, is, or one of these wide receivers is going to be streaked up. Then they want to go and take the thing, uh, take off the top. So that's why you want to have those deep thirds. Uh, playing this type of situation, but you have to have your adjustments down. You want to have your quick adjustments down for your defensive backs so you can actually put them in a position where they can take away some of these these deep uh, deep halves. So I like the deep halves. Uh, what I could do too is I can go ahead and take this guy that I'm putting back into a third or into a quarter. I could put him into a different position, but this is going to put people down in the box for me. It's going to be starting as a run defense uh, with the way this is set up, and then it's going to be very, very good against uh, against slants. So I don't know how you guys defend slants. Uh, if you if you have a certain particular defense that you, sit, that you do to defend slants, go ahead and list it down here below. Um, I'll, 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 I'd love to go ahead and lab that and just see if we can, we can go ahead and get a better defense to stop slants. But this is essentially how I would approach someone that likes to spam slants as much as possible, uh, is just getting another defense, uh, just getting a lot of defenders to take away those lanes uh, with the drop zones of uh, using the hook zones at 10 yards and then the curl flat zones at 15. So thank you for support, guys. If you do like these type of tips, make sure you smash that like button, and I'll be rolling out more offenses, defensive tips to take your game to the next level.